Well, thank you very much, and thank you for asking me to be your patron. Um, I didn't have to think about it for more than about two seconds, because everything that you're doing as an organisation really resonates with what I've been doing in terms of work over the years. Um, and I really have been incredibly impressed at the networking that goes on in this area that really empowers people to look after themselves and look after each other and build networks in the community to support each other. And I do worry that in our society there has been a tremendous tendency to say that if you're young and fit and beautiful, you're somehow of more value and more worth than if you're older and getting a bit droopy around the edges. Um, <laughs> and so there is something really important about actually saying, no, everybody matters and we're all interconnected. I've been working for the last three years uh, on developing palliative care services across the whole of Wales. And I thought I would tell you just a little bit about what we've been doing. It's very easy to make the assumption that because this is going on around, everybody knows about it. But I thought it might be helpful just to tell you what's happening, but also possibly to give you roots as well to help people improve the care that they're getting if they feel that they need it or if you spot something which isn't as good as it should be because things aren't perfect everywhere. That's why we have to keep on driving up standards. I sometimes think that good care is a bit like looking after orchids. They need a lot, it needs to be treasured, it needs to be nurtured, it needs to be gently watered. If you don't water it, then it's gonna die on you and wither away. But actually, bad care is a bit like weeds in the garden. It doesn't matter how much you root them out, they keep on popping up again. And somehow, it's about nurturing that good care. It's about nurturing the good things going on in society and really having a zero tolerance to things that are bad. Now, when you talk to older people, they all talk about death and dying. They talk about it amongst themselves. They talk about their friends who've died. They talk about what they want and what they don't want. And so we live in a kind of crazy society where we pretend that we won't talk about it, but actually, if you go and sit with a group of older people having coffee, they'll often talk, quite frankly, amongst themselves about the fact that what they want, what they don't want, and also what's happened to people who they know. So I wanted to talk to you, as I said, about what we're doing in Wales. And that dying well matters. Living well until you die matters. And it was Cicely Saunders who said that how people die lives on in the memory of those around. And so what happens to people in that last phase of their life, whether it's days or weeks or months or years, sets the template for the next generation. We're all interconnected. And it was Cicely who said that dignity is having a sense of personal worth. And I'll come back to that. Because the press talk about dignity as if you've either got it or you haven't. But actually it comes from the way that people, sorry, behave towards you. I've been struck sometimes when I've, take, I've discussed issues particularly around the thorny topic of assisted suicide which as some of you may be aware I've taken a stand in opposing changing the law because I think it's too dangerous but what's often struck me is that there'll be a, a speaker who'll say well wouldn't it be dreadful if you became incontinent and I like to say to people look everybody in the audience who's over 60 I'm not going to ask you to put your hand up but <laughs> Haven't? Yeah, well, there you are. You all know. <laughs> Once you get over 60, you leak a bit from time to time. So what? It doesn't make you any less of a person. It's just one of those things that happens. Just get on with it. So let me tell you a little bit about what we've done and how we've tried to pull things together. In 2008, Edwina Hart had commissioned a planning review of services, which was done by Viv Sugar, and that highlighted inequity of access, inequity of provision to palliative care services, and inequity of funding across Wales. 
and then Edwina asked me to chair an implementation board to implement the plan to do something about this. It's very easy to say this, this and this ought to happen. I have to say it's slightly harder work to change it. It's a bit like trying to turn around a juggernaut sometimes.